infirmity, victimhood. That's what's happening. And so you're going to see a lot more of it. This confused lady on Grey's Anatomy, she's just, she is the tip of the iceberg, okay? She is one exemplar of a very sick culture. Even the most celebrated and privileged people do this. Jennifer Lawrence just did an interview with Variety. Jennifer Lawrence, one of the most celebrated, wealthy, privileged people in the world. Jennifer Lawrence talking about how she overcame oppression, how how oppressed she still is. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie because it wouldn't work, we were told. Girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but boys cannot identify with a female lead. Oh, absolutely. And it just makes me so happy every single time I see a movie come out that just blows through every single one of those beliefs and proves that it is just a lie to keep certain people out of the movies, to keep certain people in the same positions that they've always been in. And it's just amazing to watch it happen and watch you at the helm. Laura Croft is the hardest hit. There were, before Jennifer Lawrence, there were no female stars of action movies. I thought, I don't watch a lot of movies, a lot of new movies. So I thought, oh, maybe, is that true? And wait a second. What about Laura Croft? Remember that from 2000, 2001? That was like 20 years ago. We had a female action hero. And then I kind of Googled it, looked it up. Uh, there was uh, Linda Hamilton, obviously in Terminator, 1984. Sigourney Weaver in Aliens, 1986. Uh, Bridget Fonda, 1993, Point of No Return. Gina Davis in The Long Kiss Goodnight, 1996. Uh, you've got, uh, well, obviously you've got Uma Thurman, Kill Bill. You've got uh, uh, Mila Jovovich, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but Resident Evil. You remember Resident Evil? That was also 2003. So, you know, there have been a bunch of women who were action stars, and it wasn't wasn't really all that hard for Jennifer Lawrence at all compared to any other actress, compared to any other actor for that matter. But it's not enough for Jennifer Lawrence to go out and say, I'm really beautiful. I'm really privileged. I'm, I'm in all of these movies. I'm very wealthy. I'm, no, that, that's, she has to frame it as I overcame such oppression that still exists. And so what's the point she's making, by the way? Even to the point that she's making, she says, you know, it was just commonly understood that uh, everyone can identify with a male action hero, but not everyone can identify with a female action hero. Well, yeah, that's true. That part is true. That part's obviously true. Why There are more male action heroes than female action heroes, of course, because it, there are more men engaged in public action in the world than there are women. And especially when we're talking about action movies, because that typically requires physical strength and men are stronger than women. What she's really complaining about here is that the movies, even big sensational movies, even action movies, are reflecting reality too much. And that's, that's terrible. It's, it's this insistence that, no, no, the women have to be like the men. The, the, this is, it's wrong to portray men doing things that men ordinarily and traditionally and naturally would do. No, the women have to do that too. Wah, wah, wah. I hate reality. That's what it, that's what it so often comes down to. Wah, wah, wah. I hate reality. Uh, uh, Kirk Cameron has a book coming out on how family is good and faith is good and here are the good, true, and beautiful things that you should follow. No, we can't have that. That's too in line with reality. No, no, we've just got to pass out uh, gay sex toys to kids pre-K through grade 12 in Chicago. No, that's what we have to We have to constantly contradict reality because of how offensive it is. And then when reality reasserts itself, when it rears its ugly head, we can whine and complain even when we're the most privileged, uh, famous, wealthy people on the face of the earth. If that doesn't, if that does not convince you to avoid leftism, if that does not convince you to live a more conservative life, I don't know what will. Because you look at conservatives, even conservatives with very humble stations that don't have a lot of money, that don't have a lot of power, don't have a lot of influence. They're very often quite content And you look at the most famous, powerful, richest, influential leftists in the world, and they're almost always miserable. And they get into really weird stuff. The the further up you go, the the more you get into the realm of high luxury and 
and you know, haute couture and all these sorts of things. Well, Balenciaga. You look at Balenciaga. The, the faces of Balenciaga are the most famous wealthy people on earth. And what's, what's Balenciaga peddling? Blood and guts and gore and chains and dungeons and pedophilia and Satanism and all this really weird stuff that I don't understand. Perhaps in part because I'm a man. So I have a panel of women here to explain it to me. The rest of the show.